Our next guests come from a big celebrity family and have been entertaining fans for years. The name Osmond usually makes us think about music and entertainment, but today two members of the family are going to share something very different. Alan, a member of the famous Osmond Brothers, and his son David, also a singer and musician, both live with MS, multiple sclerosis, and they join us now. So glad That's you right. guys are here. Thanks for having us. It's fun to be here. Big event that you're attending. I'm the big one. You're the big <laughs> one. He's my, he's my son. I'm one of his he's, eight sons. He's right? the he's big, big hit. <laughs> no, we're here for the uh, with the National MS Society. Yes, for the WAMS lunch and Wham's, women against, against MS. Multiple yeah. You get a bunch yes. of women together. It's amazing. And I'm going to be gonna there with you too. Right? So it's awesome. going to be a lot of. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's so a big party. Let's talk about living with MS. Just okay. When were you diagnosed first, Alan? Well, about uh, almost 25 years ago, I had these symptoms. My my right side went out. I, I noticed I was foot drop and I was tripping. And then I couldn't play my trumpet as fast and didn't know what it was. We, we worked on it and went to doctors all over for almost three years until they finally said, well, it's MS. I said, what's MS? Many sons? And so we said, <laughs> we didn't know what it was, but we learned. They didn't have any answers back then. They told no. them, take an aspirin, come back in six months. Yeah. But now, you know, we're dealing with it. My wife said, we can, we can deal with this. And my brothers and sisters, when I got sick and I couldn't, when I fell, actually, they, they said, You're, we're not going on without you. So wow. that encouragement, the family, kept us moving forward. Yeah. And who would have ever thought that my son would come up with MS also later? Never thought that, it was, you know, when I had my first symptoms, I didn't, the last thing I thought was MS, because it was so vastly different from my dad's symptoms. Uh, within a few months, I was actually in a wheelchair. Couldn't move from the chest down. My eyesight diminished, and music, like I was doing my entire life, just like my dad, was done. And uh, it's pretty amazing that I'm back on my feet. I'm doing in incredibly well. Uh, like it's a dad. miracle. Like it's a miracle. Dad. It's true. Well, you it's really true. are an inspiration to people. Do you have a message for people that might well, be living with MS? Well, my dad says almost every single day, and, and having grown up since a kid, I, I've only pretty much known my dad to have MS. But to have a guy who's an uber optimist and has this attitude uh, going through the challenges he's had, I mean, what an invaluable tool for me as a kid. So when I was diagnosed, the first thing I thought of what he always said was, I may have MS. But MS, MS does not have me. me. That's right. And that yeah. attitude of overcoming and being positive has been key for me. That's what we hope we can share with others with MS, that it's not, it's the lack of hope. There is hope. There is, it's possible to get better. And our father have taught us when we were kids, if we had challenges, he said, you can do it. Well, I'm telling everybody, hopefully tomorrow, along with his great singing voice and message, that if you have MS, you can do it. You can survive. There's things you There's can do. There's been more developed in the research of MS in yeah. the last five yeah. years than the last hundred. I was going to say, don't I mean, you feel fortunate to be living at a time where there's so much oh. research going on and, of it, course, treatments? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds crazy to say, but yeah, it's a good time to have MS. It right. really is. And, and honestly, for me, it seems really insane to say this, but it's one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. Why do you say that? I feel that way because it's given me a perspective on life that I wouldn't have otherwise. Well, and so I can echo that. And i got to tell you, after almost 25 years, I think I'm happier now than I've ever been. Yeah. It's because your attitude, and you have to deal with, well, why have I got this? What can I learn from it? See, I learned more things in having MS that I never would have learned. And you think if you apply yourself to don't give up, but do something else that you can do, then you'll be happy. Yeah, you've always got two choices in life, no matter what the circumstance. And, and it's, I, I believe, and I know my dad does too, you choose that which brings you closest to God, and you'll find happiness. And, and you can choose another path, and, and it's sometimes a destructive path. Mm -hmm. But if you can find something to laugh at every day, to smile about, there's so, my, my cup is overflowing. Yeah, I, I may have MS, but I know that my circumstance pales in compared to someone, to someone else, whether it's MS or something else, you know what I mean? And having eight sons, I had a lot to smile at. <laughs> well, we should talk about okay. your enormous family. You said some, 20 grandchildren? I mean, his little daughter coming in a few months is going to be our 20th grandchild. A few weeks, not months. Yeah, we could have a yeah, picture, yeah, actually, yeah. we could put up on my, the screen. My, my, my wife and daughter intrude. are here with me. This, was, this picture was taken last year at the event. We're speaking. My so daughter just turned two now. You're expecting your second. My wife is expecting in about three weeks, and she's wow. here with us. I can't believe you it. You know, I just so. want to mention, you were in a wheelchair when you proposed to your, your now wife. Yeah. I mean, so remarkable yeah, strides you've made. crazy that she said yes. You know what I mean? It's so insane. How did you do it? How did you move from the wheelchair to where if you you've are? got about three hours, I could tell you. <laughs> but, quickly, if you uh, could share honestly, with us. I, I've taken a, a different approach, working very closely with my neurologist, finding uh, the therapies that work best for me. I decided to start out with much more of a natural approach, 
and detoxification, dietary, just a really a, a rigorous regimen that way. And it's, for me, it's made all the difference. Uh, I currently am not on a therapy, a drug therapy, but I'm, I'm, I'm working very closely with my neurologist to make sure that I'm not being stupid and just being ignorant that way. But things are going extremely well for me. I know every one of us with MS is very different, but it's working wonders for me. And I just say, too, besides the physical and the food, and the mental approach is most important. Scriptures tell us that in your heart, as, you, as, you, as, a, as one thinketh in his heart, so is he. Well, you become what you think about. Well, I, that's why I said I may have MS, but MS does not have me. And you fight it. Come on back, and I'm not going to take it sitting down. That's why I throw my cane down and then and fall if I have to, but I'm hoping to try. <laughs> there's a lot of research that is, is happening right now, and it's, it is an exciting time. And there's some great therapies that are coming out. There's even from, from the pharmaceutical, from the natural route. And it's just really great to be a part of a group like the MS Society yeah. that we come together, some great minds, some great people, and, and you talk about it and you share experiences. And so there's a, a great, great support day. There. We are living in a great day. Okay. So how can people help? Well, help yourself first by, by your attitude, mm -hmm. number one. Yeah. Number two, you accept the fact that you have it. In fact, that there's no, nobody's fav played favorites. There's no favorites. You can get it just like anybody else. So accept that. And then what yeah. else would you say? I would say that there's a lot of people with MS that we don't even know about. Mm -hmm. We think somewhere around 400,000 uh, is the number. But because of doctor-patient privileges, we don't have exact numbers. But there are massive groups of people that get together to, to support each other. I would say get involved in your local chapters, whatever the case might be. There's some great groups of people when, out there. When that, I first got it, I, w I was embarrassed. I didn't, I didn't want anybody to know about it. I didn't want my family, really. But eventually, I, I called in at Funicello because the press came out That's and right. said, Alan was sick, he's dying. I'm not dying. So I went to Annette Funicello, what do you do? She said, just come out with it. So I did. It's the best thing you can do if you have MS. Just face it, come out with it, and deal with it. And you can win. Yeah. You can do it. Well, gentlemen, we're out of time, but we know you're going to perform for us a little sure. later yeah. in the show. And if you want more information on the MS Society chapter, just click, uh, click on our website, uh, WTNH.com. We'll have all the information there. And just really quickly, congratulations to Marie, who just oh, recently yes. got married. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you couldn't be there. I, I didn't know about it. <laughs> well, she called me Monday. She says, Wednesday, we're going to get married. Can you be there? I said, I'm in Connecticut. <laughs> well, we're so, glad you're here with us. <laughs> she's very happy. I'll just Great. tell everybody she's very Thank happy. You. Coming up. He's known as the young Edgy Osman, but his music will surely stir your soul. I'm back with David Osman. Edgy Osman. Is it uh, the hair, maybe? I think maybe. It'll catch you. Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> All right, I got to ask you, what was it like growing up in this huge, big musical family? I honestly don't know any different. I think, I mean, as, as a kid growing up in that environment, you think, oh, yeah, every kid's dad does this. Every kid's dad gets on stage and sings and dances and plays instruments. And yeah. He goes around on a tour bus. Sure. Uh, it, it wasn't until much, much later you realize, wow, this is a really you cool thing, you know? Sure. It's, it's a blast. And I got a huge family, and, and, and we're very close, Must all of us. Must be a lot of fun. When did you start performing? Since I was two years old. I don't even right? remember. I've seen the videos. But since I was four years old is when I started performing full time. I have seven brothers, no sisters. Me and my three older brothers, we were a barbershop quartet. Oh, how I was fabulous. the lead singer, the youngest That's of the terrific. four. And so since then, we've been performing that kind of music. We went, we turned into a boy band. We used to tour at the New Kids on the Block. No way. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I remember you from American Idol. Yeah. Well, I broke from the group and did the music theater, did Joseph and Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat, and, and had an opportunity to go on American Idol. And it was a, a blast. I had a great time. Oh, that's terrific. So much fun. Um, so before we get going, you have an album out right now. That's right. And that's that right. is called? Uh, Road Less Traveled. And I have another one called Reflected. It's not officially released. But it's available from my website, davidosmond.com. All right. And it's kind of a, the first soft release phase of it. And uh, I'm going to sing a song from that album. And, and it's a chance to be able to do music. You know, now, since music was taken away mm -hmm. for a while because of my physical condition, being back on my feet, literally, being able to play my guitar again, sure. to have my voice back, my, even my eyesight back, um, I'm doing music with much more fervor and much more passion than ever. Great. So. And this uh, song you wrote in honor of your wife? Of course, yeah. Who's a, who might give birth any, any second now? Any second. So <laughs> if you're at the hospital, call me, please. No. All right. Well, we're all set. Take it away. Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. This is a song I'd like to dedicate, of course, not just to my wife, but those that uh, are in support and, and have uh, loved ones that go through hardships and, and hard conditions that... Uh, have that love and, and that support is, is so vital. And I wrote this song to my wife, you know, after proposing pretty much from my wheelchair. And by some crazy reason, she said yes. And um, 
that's invaluable to me and she's been there like a rock in sickness and health and so uh, I wrote this song for her and I hope you enjoy it since the day that we met you've been a mystery You started me guessing the moment that you kissed me There's so much about you I still can't believe Did you find you were falling like I had been falling for you? Were you counting the days before seeing my face tell the truth? Does love like this really just happen? Baby, forgive me for asking, how could it be? You wanted me 